As the foundation includes the design of pile caps supporting a column, sometimes the column transfers very heavy vertical loads to the foundation. So the design needs to be checked thoroughly in these special cases. This is Javier Encinas, and today we're gonna design from scratch a pile cap example showing a column that is eccentric and also transfers heavy vertical loads to the foundation. Let's get started. As an example, consider this column, 26 by 26 inches, that transfers the load shown here. Dead load, 700 kips vertical, light load, 500 kips vertical. Wind load is 70 kips vertical and 40 kips horizontal. The soil report has provided the allowable capacity for the piles. They recommend 12-inch round concrete piles with allowable capacity 140 kips in compression and 5 kips in lateral when the piles are vertical. The goal is to design this foundation with these heavy loads and also knowing that the column is eccentric, 12 inches from the center lines in both directions. Also, we need to check if any battered piles are required to resist these horizontal loads. Let's get started. When you open ASDIP Foundation, you see the modules included in this package. Spread footings, strap footings, combined footings, wall footings, pile caps, and pile analysis and design. I already created a project for a pile cap design. Just click on this node. And this is the template of the pile cap design in ASDIP Foundation. The first step is to enter the information given in the statement of the problem. Let's go to the loads tab. Here we know that the dead load is 700 kips vertical. No moments, no shears. And light load is 500 vertical. Also, we have some wind loads, 70 kips vertical, and shears, 40 kips in each direction. These are the loads that were given in the problem. Okay, let's go to the materials tab. Here we can enter also what we know from the statement is the compression allowable capacity of the pile is 140 kips and uh, the lateral capacity is 5 kips. We can enter also F'C for uh, the pile cap. Usually it's either 3 or 4 KSI. In this case, we're going to say that it's 4 KSI for this pile cap. And the column, which is a very heavy, heavily loaded column, will use 5 KSI concrete. So we have entered all the information that we know. Let's go to the geometry tab. Let's use a 18 pile cap. The pile edge distance is 1.5 feet. The pile spacing, three feet. The accidental pile offset, three inches. This is pretty much the standard. The pile type is round and the pile size is 12 inches. Here we can go to the graph tab to see what we are doing. This is basically the pile cap that we are defining. As you can see, the pile layout is a standard. It follows the CRSI standard layout of the different number of piles. We can go now to the pile cap tab. The pile cap length and width can be calculated now according to the information given in the previous tab. Let's say that the soil cover is one foot. And the water table, it's six feet, which, so it's under the bottom of the pile cap, so there's no influence of the water table in this design. The pile cap thickness is now 48 inches. Let's leave it the way it is. And if we need to change it, we will come back to this page. Let's go to the column tab. Here we specify the size of the column. 
which says that it's a 26 by 26 inches column. And we said that it's eccentric, 12 inches in each direction. So 12 inches. You can see graphically here this, uh, this view, plan view, 12 inches in the other direction. So the column is eccentric in, in both directions, okay? So we have defined the geometry of the pie cap with the exception of the thickness, which is in this tab. The thickness is controlled by the shear stresses. Let's go to the other glance tab. Here we can see a summary of the results. We can see some deficiencies, particularly in the uh, bending design area. Here at the top, we can see the ratios related to the shear, one-way shear and punching shear. The maximum here is the first one, which is the ratio at a distance D from the column line. The ratio is 0.98, so it's very, very close to the border line. That means that we can either leave the thickness as it is, or if we want to be a little bit more conservative, we need to increase the thickness. Let's say that we increase the thickness instead of 48, let's say 50 inches, and now the ratio is 0.93. It's a little bit more comfortable, so let's leave it as 50 inches thick. Now let's focus on the reinforcement. Go to the reinforcement tab. Here we can define all the rebars in the pie cap and in the column. In the Araglance tab, we can see a summary of the results. Here we can see a couple of deficiencies. One is in the low transfer area here. And, uh, Two more deficiencies in the bending design area, particularly for the bottom bars. So in the bending capacity, the ratio is 1.13. We are 13% over, so we need to increase the size and probably the number of the rebars as well. In addition, the minimum steel area is 53% over, so we need to go and solve that issue. Instead of number 8, let's try to use number 9 in both directions. X and Z. The minimum steel area is still 21% over, so we need to increase the number of rebars. Instead of 12, let's say 15 rebars in both directions. And now the ratio is 0.96. Also, the bending capacity is 0.72. So with 15, number 9 in each direction, the issue is solved. Now in the low transfer area, the minimum column steel area ratio is 1.28, meaning that we need to add more rebars for the column. Let's go to the column tab. Let's say that we use number eight rebars and use five bars in the top and bottom and three bars left and right. So basically we go to the graph tab, column. This is the column that we are defining here. The program calculates the interaction diagram of this column. The applied loads are represented by this point. So it's, it's close to the limit, close to the capacity of the column in, in actual load, but it's acceptable, so we leave it as it is. Let's go back to the other glance tab. So with this configuration, of with this geometry and with this reinforcement, we are passing all the tests, or the ratios are smaller than 1.0. We go to the condensed tab. We can see a more detailed set of calculations, uh, group by topic. Here is the overturning calculations, the one-way shear for the controlling load combination, at a distance D and at the column phase. Here is the, the punching shear, the controlling load combinations, at a distance D over 2 and also at the column phase. Here is the bending design, everything is passing. If we go to the detail tab, it's an even more detailed set of calculations, step by step, with all the formulas exposed, and also with references to the design code, as in this case. We go to the graph tab, graphically. We go to the pipe reactions, one-way shear tab, and the punching shear at a distance d over 2 from the column phase and at the column phase. Then the bending design at the column phase and finally the construction tab that shows the pile cap 
in plan view and elevation view showing the reinforcement that we just designed. As you can see, it's very easy to design a pie cap using acid foundation, particularly when you have a heavily loaded column, which is eccentric in the, in the pie cap. We were able to model this example in just a few minutes and optimize the design as well, which otherwise would be very time consuming if we tried to do it by hand. If you like the software, please visit the website www.asdipsoft.com and download the free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.